Good morning and welcome to Vlogtober day 18. I have taken a few days off. I just really, I really needed to, to recharge. Before this month, I would never have been able to express how much work it is to edit and post a video every day for like two weeks <laughs> or more. I am trying to jump back into it by doing a bit of like a reset day for myself. So I showered this morning, I've put on my favorite sweater and I am gonna go out and about and do like a few, a few errands that I need to do today. Probably gonna stop by a Walgreens, realizing I also need to refill my prescription, like my Dexcom prescription. That's something that also needs to happen probably today or tomorrow. I follow this person on TikTok and she goes by Geo and she does Spooky Lake Month. So if you have ever heard a video that starts with, um, yes, hello, Spooky Lake Month, where we do 31 days of haunted hydrology. <laughs> I really like the consistency with how they like post their content, the voice that they use, the production value, the stories that they bring, the way that they honor people who, who have like died in these places. Really want to acquire their book. It came out this, this month. They are going to be at the event at the Wisconsin Historical Society. So if we go, it will be very, very exciting to meet them. So those are my thoughts so far. I'm just watching the kids across the street play in the leaves. It's very, very cute. Their mom is out there like tossing them in the pile of leaves. They're like taking turns riding their scooters and their bike and then she's like tossing them in the leaves. So it's very cute. We're gonna get on our way. Windsor and I went on a walk. I caught Nim trying to sleep in a brown paper bag. <laughs> he did have a box of fabric and it was sitting next to our table so it would catch the morning sun and he would lay in it and all this stuff. He wasn't really using it so I moved it and then today I put his smaller box like back in that spot and there were some bags in it from when we got groceries. And I look over and he's like trying to like curl up inside this bag of paper bags. I went and got his box and I brought it back and I'll show you, but he's sleeping in it right now. These are what he was trying to sleep in. But this is what he really wanted. A sleepy little kitty cat. Hello, Nimi. You're so pretty. Hi. The sun in this parking lot is a little bit atrocious. Task one, task two, okay, hang on. Let's just back up a little bit. Task three completed for the day. First task, maybe task four. First task was taking Thomas to work. Second task was taking Windsor on a walk. Actually, lots of tasks. My ADHD brain is like, actually, we don't remember what we've done. <laughs> First task, taking Thomas to work. Second task, taking Windsor on a walk. Third task, showering. Fourth task, forgetting that we had maintenance scheduled for the day, running late, happened to still be at home when the maintenance person arrives. Fourth, fifth task is like squirreling the animals away so then they can't get to the person doing the repairs. And then errand one is done, almost ready to go back home, and I'm gonna grab Pancheros for lunch. We've done so much already, and it's like 1.40. back home. I have food. I am about to settle in and eat some Pancheros for lunch. I don't often share this, but I'm just checking my blood sugar first. Pancheros is a very rice heavy meal, um, but I have found that when my blood sugar is like mid, mid range, like maybe like 130s, I might eat half of it. But currently my blood sugar is 99. That's like for a person without diabetes, that's the top end of your range, like what you would want your, your blood sugar to be at. But for me, this is kind of like the blood sugar that I have if I haven't eaten in a little while or if I've been like doing more movement, maybe my blood sugar is like 90. 99, if my blood sugar is 99, then I'm not really super concerned about eating all of the Pancheros if I'm hungry enough. Just thought I'd share. We are gonna do a little bit of like a tablescape. We're gonna lay the table. I've set aside a few tablecloths from like our wedding things here. There are like a few bins with vase and votive holders that go really well together. So I think that that's the setup that I'm going to try to do. Okay, so in this bin, I have like a doily, some vases, some like candle holders and like disco ball. In here are all of the candles, like small candles, taper candles, LED, like battery candles, just like lots of big candles. <laughs> and then I have like an orange tablecloth and more like a scarlet or like a red orange situation. I'm gonna take up this bin because it's kind of this colorway, but I'm gonna take these two upstairs so we can maybe have some like candles and other things. The kitchen is so open right now. I forgot. 
forgot what it's like to have nothing there. <laughs> Very cool. So I just whipped up this berry salad. We usually eat this in the summertime. Basil, blueberries, and strawberries. And honestly, I think that it gets like more, like the savory element of the basil comes out more and more as it sits. It just gets better over time. So huge recommendation if you're wanting a fruit salad that isn't just like heavily sweet. The basil really helps ground it a lot. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I'm gonna end this video, sat in my chair, and I'm gonna answer a random question. Let's generate a random question. Who was your favorite teacher and why? This one is very tricky. I have had like a few favorite teachers for sure. My first favorite teacher was probably Mrs. Vinger. She was my fourth grade teacher. That like teacher student relationship was so important because in fourth grade is when you really start to question your own. I mean, it might happen at different ages for different people, but for me, I was really starting to question my own self image. I was really starting to question like what, you know, what my body looked like and compared to other people you know, who I was as a person. Was I a nice person? Having a very like strong and confident and caring teacher to, you know, talk to through those moments and to like nurture us <laughs> and encourage us. It was just like really important for my development and self-esteem to have her as a teacher at that point. And then I think equally and in a different direction in high school, I needed another teacher and mentor to help me understand how I was framing who I was becoming. And for me in high school, that teacher is definitely Mr. Fargen. He is my history teacher and also basketball coach, which is just like such a combination. History teachers are coaches of sports anyway. Loved his class really encouraged me to think critically. He loved acronyms like PI, 
principled, informed, independent decisions. And that's just been such an important thing for me to have as like a critical thinker and, you know, a citizen of the world. So for lots of reasons, those two people really helped in like teaching me how to become me. Who was your favorite teacher? What age or what grade did you have them? And what impact did they leave upon you because they knew you? And I just recently got to see Mrs. Finger at our wedding. So that was just really wonderful and lovely. I am hoping to finish Vlogtober strong. Took off a few days. I think moving forward, it might be a little bit sporadic. There are some, some like Halloween-y festive things that are gonna be happening. And then there's also like a span of days at the end of the month where Thomas is gonna be in California. So. Anywho, I love ya. See you tomorrow. Bye.